Hello again, and welcome to Monday Morning's Reflection. I am Sylvia from Holy Trinity and St Michael's. And of the readings for today, my choice is a favourite, the healing of Naaman, a military commander in the Syrian army, the superpower of the day, feared by their neighbours and respected as a great nation. As a retired nurse, I like this story of restoration and healing, people helping even those who are their enemies, even those that have enslaved them. So here is the story of Naaman from the year, second book of Kings, chapter five. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who was in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter he took to the king of Israel read, with this letter, I'm sending you my servant Naaman to you, so you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and come back and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Make the man come to me. He, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to say to him, Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River, and your flesh will be restored and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call upon it the name of the Lord his God, wave his hand over the spot and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abana and Papapha, the rivers of Damascus, Better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he went off in a rage. Naaman's servants went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more then when he tells you, wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him. And his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel, so please accept a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, as surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept a thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry, for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the Lord. But may the Lord forgive your servant for this one thing. 
when my master enters the temple of Rimmon to bow down and he is leaning on my arm and I have to bow there also. When I bow down in the temple of Rimmon, may the Lord forgive your servant for this. Go in peace, Elisha said. We thank God for his holy word. There's this hefty fellow in full armour, giving orders and expecting instant obedience, trusted fully by his king and all the army, fully in control, hit by a tiny organism that he has no control over, knowing that it is rejected, it will bring early death and somehow even worse, deformity and disability, losing his place in society, unwanted. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? He doesn't know what he can do. He can't do anything about it. There isn't a cure. There isn't even a vaccine to protect his family. And this little lassie who has been captured and enslaved, who looked at her mistress's husband with compassion and spoke out about how he could be healed. I'm not sure that if I was enslaved, I would be bothered to mention it. But this little girl knew all about the God of the Israelites and that he was mighty and the best. And he would expect her to care. When the Syrian king sent the message to the Israelite king, things could have gone seriously wrong. But Elisha intervened and Naaman turned up at his house. And Elisha didn't even bother to come to the door himself, but sent instructions which seemed much too simple, much too mundane. But Naaman had sensible servants who persuaded him to do as he was told. And so he was healed. But what was more important, Naaman acknowledged the supremacy of the real God, the God of the Israelites, and determined to worship him and him alone. I'm struck by the parallels in this story with the encounter that Jesus had with a centurion whose servant was dying. St. Luke tells us that this Roman officer had so much authority that he could order battalions around. And so when he comes to Jesus, he says that Jesus doesn't need to bother coming to see the servant. The centurion knew that Jesus could just say the word for the poor man to be healed. He sends a message to Jesus. Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word and my servant will be healed. Both Naaman and the centurion are foreigners, members of the oppressive regimes that lord it over the Jews. They are people in authority who can cause a lot of trouble and are hated by most as representing evil. Their gods are not the God of Israel. Their customs are not in accordance with the law of God or even just the Ten Commandments. Their language is unintelligible. They look different. They even smell different. They are the other, not one of us. You and me, we aren't prejudiced. We don't say hateful things to those who are different from us. We try to help everybody, don't we? That's, that is true. That's true for most of the time, for me anyway. I can't really speak for you. But the media have brought it up in the past year. So many hidden hatreds, so many prejudices that it's a bit like lancing a boil. The badness has got to come out before the healing can be started. And even if we only can complain about the stupidity of people concerning the pandemic, we are showing contempt 
for some of God's children. Even if we repeat the unpleasant remarks made about the leaders of the countries that rule the world, we are tarnishing ourselves with less than compassion. By the behaviour of a small child who knew the real God, Naaman, a great warrior, was brought to his knees in worship to the only God. By Jesus' acceptance and compassion for the centurion and his servant, the centurion came to know and worship the only real God. Maybe by our behaviour and compassion, others around us may come to know and worship God the Father through Jesus the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me end with a prayer. Father God, show us how to speak gently to those around us, that they may see the wonder of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, and seek you out to worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Have a good day and keep safe.